Hey guys, Marco the Dog Trainer here. Today we're going to be doing a super quick video on my favorite e-collars for training golden retrievers. We've got the Dogtra Arc over here and we've got the Dogtra 1900S over here. Now, in my experience with golden retrievers, I have noticed that people really underestimate the level of stimulation that a golden retriever is going to need. Kind of like labs, golden retrievers are known to be like friendly and uh, easygoing and everybody loves them. So anytime you start talking about using a stronger collar for them, people think that stronger collars are just for bad dogs. Okay, so it's not that golden retrievers are bad dogs. It's just that their breed tends to be a little bit less sensitive to stimulation the way some other breeds may be. So a lot of the times that I'm working with a golden retriever, I'm probably going to be thinking more about the 1900S because it's a little stronger. Um, but I wanted to give the ARC as an option as well because there's definitely been a lot of golden retrievers that I've used the ARC with and it's been totally fine. Um, so let's take a look at both of these models so we can figure out which one's going to work better for your golden retriever. All right, guys, we've got the Dogtra Arc on the left and the 1900S on the right. Now, we're not going to go over every single difference and similarity just because I've got other videos that do that. But we are going to talk through the features that I like so much about using these e-collars for golden retrievers. And then we're also going to talk through the kind of key differences that may push me more towards one or the other. Okay, so the first thing that I really like about both of these models or that they're entirely waterproof, or at least as waterproof as this stuff can get. Because almost every person I've ever met with their golden retriever loves to take them swimming. Okay, now the second thing that I really like is that these connect up to three quarters of a mile from remote to collar. So again, you know, a lot of the golden retrievers I work with, you know, they're running around off leash all the time. So it's nice to have that kind of range. Now, again, depending on, you know, which type of golden retriever we have and what their fur is like, it's also nice that we can adjust the contact points um, to kind of fit, the, you know, the, the type of fur that our dog has. Now, these are one inch points that are probably longer than what you would need for a golden retriever, but they do also have half inch and different sizes. So you can kind of match that however it fits best. Now, um, they both come with the Nick constant and vibrate stimulation. So, you know, that's all, you know, pretty typical stuff. Now, as far as differences go, the first difference is going to be size and shape. Okay, where the arc is a little bit smaller, a little bit thinner, and the uh, 1900 is a little bigger and bulkier, a little heavier. Okay, even from the side here, you can see there is quite a jump there. Okay, so that's kind of the first thing that I'm always thinking about because, again, like, you know, golden retrievers, I've worked with 40 pound ones and I've worked with like 100 pound golden retrievers. So the first thing I'm always thinking about is how big is my dog supposed to get? Okay, now the second thing is always going to be the level of stimulation. Now, um, working with golden retrievers, I found over time that um, they just tend to require a stronger level of stimulation. And a lot of people um, that don't understand dog training think that that translates to golden retrievers being bad dogs, but that's not what it is. You know, every breed is a little bit different. And uh, my understanding is that some golden retrievers are actually bred to go through thorn bushes and things like that to retrieve. So they're actually bred to have kind of a stronger tolerance to physical type stuff. So a lot of times I find myself using the 1900S on a lot of golden retrievers just because it kind of cuts through that work drive a little bit better than the ARC does. Now, again, just like I say in all of my videos, it's really this constant balance between how does the, the shape and size of the collar fit my dog and is it going to be strong enough? Okay, because I've definitely worked with smaller golden retrievers that I still use the 1900S just because they had a really, really um, high sense of, of stimulation that they needed. Um, and I've also worked with big golden retrievers that the ARC was plenty. Okay, so that's why it's always going to be this kind of balance, um, the size and shape versus the stimulation. Um, so if you tend to be on the kind of cautious end and you're saying, oh, I just really want to make sure that this collar is strong enough, then maybe just go with the 1900S. And, you know, even though it's a stronger collar, that doesn't mean you need to keep it cranked up all the time. You know, you can always keep this at a lower number. Um, and uh, again, I just like knowing that I can go up if I need to. Okay, where sometimes if you, you know, get the arc and it's not quite strong enough and you're really on the top end of that collar most of the time, you're just not going to have much room to go stronger if you happen to need it.
So those are really the two main things that I'm going to be thinking about when I'm picking either the ARC or the 1900S for my Golden Retriever. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.